All right, good morning. Thanks to everybody who got up early for this, or if you're on the East Coast, thanks for uh, taking a little time out of your early afternoon. My name is Nicholas Smith. I'm the Director of Technology here at JBNA, and uh, I just want to thank you for spending a little time with us. We're going to cover a, um, a bunch of stuff today in terms of uh, some announcements from Quantum, a little bit about what that um, announcement is, a little bit about what Quantum is if you're new to it, and of course we're going to hit on CAD TV because it wouldn't be a JBNA webinar if we didn't. But I want to talk about the importance of these changes with Quantum, what they're doing and how it affects um, your CAD TV deployment. So we're going to hit on that a bit this morning. Um, if you don't know us, um, we're your friends all over the country, we're the experts in video and digital media. Um, of course, we run more than that, digital signage, IP streaming, connectivity, collaboration, digital display. We do a lot of really fun things, and of course, um, we're very uh, we're very easy to work with, as we like to think. Um, you know, again today, though, we're going to focus on CAD TV and Quantum, um, and what the announcements are on the Quantum side and how it affects your CAD TV deployments. Um, you know, a little bit about Quantum, if you don't know it. I mean, ideally, it's storage for demanding workflows. It's all about building the right storage architecture for the client um, by using tiering and sharing and preserving and you know really pulling it together in a way that benefits a client's workflow, which is why I like it so much for CAT DV. But why asset management? Let's talk about CAT DV for a second, and uh, we'll start with that. Um, look, there's an insatiable demand for content. We all know it, right? Everybody's making more stuff, not less stuff, and they need to manage it. Um, there's tons of new technologies and formats and new ways to get the content out, not just YouTube and Vimeo anymore, but you know, just social media in general. And so we need to have a way to manage all the content that's being contributed to those. And then you know, one thing I'm seeing more and more now is dispersed teams, people all over the country um, working together or in different offices, and they need a central line of communication to work with. Um, and then of course, there's always the need to monetize and, and uh, find value in these assets and the things that they're present, you know, creating. Um, because it takes us a lot of money to build this stuff, to store it, to archive it, but of course, so let's find some value in this content. You know, one of the things we see more and more is they realize it takes time and effort to manage all this content, and it's expensive to do it. The storage costs money, the staff costs money, all this stuff. So, you know, finding a way to realize, you know, asset management in every environment and to bring it together uh, to really utilize it well is very important. And, you know, and you know, so often I see that, you know, people go, I bought a sand, but I, I just don't know how to organize. I don't know where to, where the content is on it. And so this is really where Cat TV is going to start to shine. Um, and if you don't know this already, it's, it is a growing market. So many of our clients are not coming from the traditional, you know, broadcast environment or post-production houses, but from church from schools, from corporations that are building these production environments to create their own marketing content, their own training content. So there is so many opportunities here to find and utilize these technologies. It's probably one of the more exciting pieces of this. Um, and it's growing, see? And it's really at a, at a very substantial rate. This is picking up speed on a daily basis. Um, Important assets are scattered through the organization. We see this so often where, you know, marketing department doesn't know what the production department has, what the photo department has. So it's, it's all over the map. And so with CAD DV, we have a way to bring it together into, under one software banner so that everybody can see what the organization has, what they own. I can't tell you how many organizations I've been to, um, and once we scanned all their data, we found out that, hey, they bought the same still image or the same audio file or the same asset multiple times over because they didn't know they already owned it. They didn't know somebody already downloaded it. And so this is really where it starts to come together for us. Um, you know, it, this is a really, and for those of you who are sales types in the room and, or, or who are trying to sell the idea to your upper management of why you need asset management, this is where you're going to uh, find favor in today's meeting, which is, you know, one to six hours a week you spend managing the files, finding content to use in a production or looking for the content from a past production, and that's time lost. You know, and if we look at that in terms of a value, it roughly comes out to about $8,200 per year. And the scariest part of all is that, you know, 83 times, you know, a year you're looking for this stuff or however many it is, you fail to find it a good chunk of the time. And, you know, 35 is not 50, but it's still a lot of time lost, a lot of money lost. And when you look at that $8,000 number above and you go 35% of that $8,000 is lost and I have 10 employees or five editors and six loggers, suddenly those numbers start to stack up and you go, how can I not afford 
to have asset management. Well, wasted time, wasted money, wasted talent, all equals stress. So let's talk about how we can fix it. So what do we get with asset management? We get a reduction in time to market. We get an increase in return, right? That money comes back to us that we're spending on searching for files because we're going to know whether we have those files faster. We're going to be able to get to where they're at quicker. Um, and, you know, we're going to see a, decre a decreased time in the asset creation cycle, right? How long it takes us to con create content, but not how long it takes us just to edit it, but how long it takes us to communicate to the producers, to the loggers, to the other members of the team who may not be over your shoulder all the time to say, yes, that's finished, move on, right? and now we have a, a, a way that we can communicate that. And we see our external costs reduce, right? The amount of, of tape that is purchasing, the amount of time spent uploading files or downloading files and pushing content you know, outside the four walls, we can reduce all of that. Um, and then the most important is reduce searching time, right? A better way to find your content through logging and tagging and utilizing the CatDB search tools. So why CatDV? Well, you know what? I think it's the best PAM on the market. It certainly has one of the largest install bases with over 15,000 seats and 1,500 enterprise clients. It is not a small product in terms of how many users are out there, but it's simple, it's powerful, it's definitely affordable at many different levels, um, and it, it can scale. This is one of the messages I want to get across this year with all of our, you know, our resellers and our partners out there is CatDB can scale into very, very large environments and organizations, and we can certainly talk about that um, on private conversations, but I still say it's the best production man out there. For content creators, what makes it so is we've got creation tools. Um, lots of ways to sort content, find content, and bring it together and automate so many of the processes. I can't say how many times I talk to clients and say, what keeps you in the office past 5 o'clock? And I go, well, I'm waiting for files to transcode. I'm waiting for things to download from FTPs and upload. All those things we can help with with the asset management and get you home by 5 o'clock. Or, hey, you know what? Work from home remotely via one of our web clients, and that way you can at least track and manage your content from a distance. But it's the best way to find and reuse the content. You know, how many times have you shot that shot before, but you just don't know where you put it? Now we can help you find it and reuse the stuff you've already paid money for. And it's very, very flexible, whatever your NLE, whatever the format of, of, um, of content work you're working on, and even in the deployment, we can customize the deployment to really fit your environment and make it fairly unique. And then when it comes to storage and archiving, well, we're going to talk about that today and why um, Quantum is so perfect for your asset management environment. And when we get back to the flexible part, right, lots of different storage, lots of different archives, lots of different ways to deploy it, lots of APIs, but most importantly, CatDV is at the heart of your workflow. It's really the center of everything, right? You manage the content, you organize the content, you're creating content, and you're collaborating with that content. And CatDV kind of sits in the middle of all of that and gives you a central line of communication for all your, uh, your team members. You know, most importantly, easy things are easy, hard things are possible with CatDV. Um, so we, can, we have lots of different interfaces, we have lots of different APIs to connect to all of your third-party applications like your transcoders and your QC tools and your uploaders and your downloaders so that you can have, and that is what I would like to call the Lord of the Rings here, which is one ring to rule them all. Well, CatDV can be the one interface to rule them all and give you a way to view all of your different disparate applications and kind of pull them together in an automated fashion. And different UIs. This is important, right? Because not everybody needs the complication of CatDV. Um, you know, some people just need it very simple. Some people need an app. Some people need a web page. Some people need a tool set that gives them really unique customizations and, comp and allows them to perform very complicated tasks. And with CatDV, we have an interface for everybody. Um, that's one of, I think, our exciting announcements this year is, is all the changes in our web interface and how easy it's becoming for us to communicate with our team and our staff members in a way that is uh, simple for them to engage with, very YouTube-esque almost. Well, let's talk about Stornex and Quantum right now. Uh, this part's exciting. There's some good stuff in this part today. So if you don't know Stornex, and if you don't know what Quantum is, look, they're the market leader in storage, and they've got a phenomenal client list um, and amazing awards. They've, their storage has been around for you know, quite some time, as we're going to show you. Um, they're 35 years in this industry, so they're not a newcomer to this industry. They have broken and fixed um, more things than other storage vendors because they've had time to do it and discover it and come around to it. Um, lots of deployments and lots of growth as well. I think the important part is
is down on the bottom there. 650 patents. You know, so that's powerful. That shows that it's a company that's innovative and is defining the storage by being able to put out a, uh, a patent on that end. Um, they, they've been around a while, right? They started with hard drives. Everybody owned a quantum hard drive at one time. I think I had two. Um, it cost me an arm and a leg, but, and it was tiny. I think I've got more on a, a USB key that somebody handed me at a show the other day. Um, and then they moved into tape. And really, you know, that I think has been one of their strongest pieces for years is the LTO tape market and, and that product there. And of course, into disk and then even now into high performance storage and data. Um, and, and probably more exciting now is cloud-based storage and all the offerings that the cloud brings in. But I think this piece here in the end, multi-tier storage solutions for demanding workflows. This is key because we can't put it all on one tier. And in fact, it's too expensive and too important to put it all in one tier. And it slows the performance of everybody if it's all in one tier. So with quantum, we have the ability to build an intelligent tiered storage solution. I like that part. Now, one thing that's really key, I think, is, is we often think of quantum just in the production environment, right? Broadcast houses, post-production houses, special effects houses. But I really want everybody to walk away today with it's more than just the production environment. There are so many other opportunities for our resale partners in this to go to clients they probably never thought of before and to reach out to clients that they may have just, you know, had some minor interactions with it and really offer them a unique solution, right? In the video production market, we know it's media entertainment, it's sports, it's corporate video, it's training video. But over on the intelligence surveillance side, you know, video surveillance and network forensics are phenomenally great markets, right? They need fast, intelligent storage, which is why Quantum's perfect for that environment. So if you have those clients, now's a great time to reach out with, with us or your Quantum partners to talk about how we can go um, bring these technologies to them. And on the technical side, genomics, medical imaging, geospatial, oil and gas, scientific research, again, all areas that need high-speed, intelligent um, data storage. You know, they, and they all share the same things, right? They all have you know, the similar needs of data and sharing, collaboration, retention of data, um, which is why quantum fits all of them. It's about size and speed and real-time analytics of the data, and from there, it grows into being able to globally um, replicate that data in, in multiple locations, share that data with simultaneous users in different locations, and of course analyze and draw value from that data, right? I think there's great stories about how UFC utilizes quantum to make money, not just store their content. And that's, you know, that's a key piece here because the right storage can help you make money, not just spend money. They all have the same things in common, right? Performance, access, and low cost to the capacity that they're getting. So all these things are key um, attributes to success in finding the right storage partner. Um, you know, so again, you know, let's, let's break these down. Performance, access, and low cost capacity. Bringing them all together, and really there's nobody else that can provide all three of those the way that Quantum can. Um, you know, really bring in a flexible storage platform um, for your clientele. All right, so let's talk about the storage a little more, what it is. Listen, there's a lot of people using it, and there's a lot of partners that connect to it. Here's just a nice list of them. And then they're in all different kinds of markets, not just media entertainment, but over in securities and in other environments as well. You can see here's a little bit closer in the different environments, corporate video, surveillance, cybersecurity, all these things require storage, not just disk storage, but archive storage and backup storage as well. But one, one of the things I guess we can start to hone in here um, right at this moment is intelligent data management, right? It's, it, it's, as we talk about these three different tiers, certainly we can piecemeal a solution for a client from several different manufacturers. But it's an amazing, powerful story when one manufacturer can bring you all the layers that we see on the screen. Online disk, backup disk, long-term archive, and cloud all under one management layer, under one GUI. And I think that's where we're going to start to get a little closer look at here is tiering your storage from primary to secondary to archive all the way up into the cloud, right? Managing, and this is why it plays so perfectly with CAT DD and with our asset management applications, because our editors can have one storage pool to work with, which can transition data automatically into our secondary tier, and then our, use our asset management to decide when to push that to the archive in the cloud. But again, the, the connectivity to all this is one underpinning um, storage vendor, and so they're delivering you a really, really beautiful experience at that point. So workflow is really key to asset management. 
And building a workflow is one of the pieces that Quantum can help do, and this is why we like it so much with our asset management, right? The ability to have one pool for ingest, for work in progress, for delivery and reviews, for archives and near longs, and all the way straight through to the long term, um, even to off-site. You know, archive and backup are two different things, and this is important to, you know, to build into the conversation that at what point do we archive something and what point do we back up? And with our quantum environment, we can build it all into one um, secure system. So let's look at that, what it would look like, right? So we talk about our ingest, we've got our Q series high performance, so this is the, the high speed online disk for the editors to directly connect with. Then we get into our slightly um, lower tier storage, which is really perfect for delivery and review and approve or storing of the proxy files in the media, that's sort of a near line application. Then we jump down to our lattice object storage and our near line. Again, all the same banner, all the same software, all the same management interfaces. Um, we're keeping it in the family and we're taking it all the way out to tape and archive, be it in the cloud or be it on a, um, you know, be it on an LTO tape. Um, so this whole process of ingest to, um, to long-term archive, all built under the same banner. Different storage pools for different needs though, right? So we want to make sure we're putting the right tool in the right time. So workflow storage, high speed um, storage for your editors, for your onliners, data archiving, scalable storage, and this was where we talk about our lattice products, which is object storage, whole different um, ball game than our, you know, than a traditional online storage in terms of how it operates, but what it allows us to do is scale the archive or that near line um, near infinitely, right? Continue to grow it by adding drives and by adding additional, um, you know, storage capacity. Um, but really grow that archive so that you've got a fast nearline archive that has, you know, really, really wonderful data um, retention to it, right? Very similar to how we would take an LTO tape and stick it on a shelf. We've got those same levels of security um, sitting inside of the, um, the, the uh, <clears throat> object storage platform here. But of course, not everything needs to stay online forever. Not everything needs to be on a spinning disk where it's immediately accessible. So for that is where the LTO comes in. So the next one down on the data protection side is really about taking the assets that aren't necessary anymore, that, you know, that, don't, have a, that don't have an immediate life cycle to them and putting them on a shelf where they're protected or sending them off to a vault. Um, and then last but not least, all this ties perfectly back to the cloud. You know, and that's another alternative for storing the data. And in, in most environments, or in, in often environments we're seeing right now, we're seeing all three of these. The data is coming off of the online storage, going to the lattice, going to a tape, and simultaneously going to the cloud. And this is really the, you know, the holy trifecta of data replication, where we've got it accessible immediately, we've got it accessible within, you know, a certain time span on a tape, and we've got it accessible to our partners in the cloud, where they can get their hands on it when necessary as well. Um, but what is store next? Let's dive in a little bit because not all storage is the same. Um, you know, if we boil down every storage vendor on the market, we're going to find that they're probably all using um, one of two drive manufacturers. But storage is not bent on the drive it's spinning on, but on the software that's driving it, the file system. Um, so Stornex is that file system. And look, they're the leaders in media entertainment, right? The six big movie studios, they're using Stornex. Four big broadcasters, they're using Stornex. And of course, there's hundreds of thousands of clients elsewhere using Stornex. Um, what is it? It's two pieces. So it is a file system. It's how the data is laid down to the disk. And it's the storage manager, which is the, the tool that decides where the file is and where it's going to go next, right? It's the intelligence saying, I want this file to stay online for X number of days before it goes to tape or near line and manage those files moving back and forth across those intelligent tiers. Um, it's a high performance cluster system. This is important. So Stornex file system is about performance, about getting the most performance out of those disks so that your editors aren't waiting for files to buffer up, so your producers aren't waiting to log or to find, you know, get access. They can see it quicker than ever before. Um, and there's some, some new pieces in this we're going to talk about, which is the IP clients. Um, so we'll, we're going to get into that a little bit um, more as we go further and talk about the new releases. But the tiered storage and archive is probably one of the most important. No other vendor can deliver you a tiered application like Quantum in which we can manage the files within the same architecture from 
the moment they come into the first spinning disk till the moment they either go to the cloud, to an LTO, or to the um, object storage or the near line. And it's all one environment. And again, it's all about having the right tool for the right moment, right? We don't always need the highest speed disk for every file all the time, so we can intelligently decide where those files are at and how long they're going to live on each place. Simplified data sharing for faster workflows. This comes back to this, right? High speed storage, lower speed storage for, you know, not as, you know, immediate access. All this allows us to reduce the storage cost, right? And the complexity of that storage. We can put it all into a package that fits, you know, what the, the particular needs of the environment is. One of the things that we look at with Cat DV is I often get people ask me, it goes, what's the best practices? Well, let me tell you, there isn't one because no environment is really the same as the previous one. Each of them have different needs, different ways of looking at their media, different times for how long their media stays on the different storage tiers. With Quantum, we can utilize those same principles to develop a system for the client and for their particular workflow and needs by putting in the right storage pools, the right amount of LTO, the right amount of Lattice, the right amount of Cloud to build a workflow that really fits. So within the StoreNex platform, um, you know, one of the things to know, it's StoreNex 5, um, which was released in, uh, I don't even know the exact date, it's been around a little while now, but it was re-engineered from the ground up. It's got much greater scalability, faster, faster performance. It's optimized for the latest um, disk arrays they're using so that it can be faster on those. And now we've got all these new IP connection points, right? NAS and REST interfaces and HTTP, so we can connect to it in ways that were never done before. Um, and of course, the native LTFS capability, so the ability to take those files directly to a long-term LTO tape. Um, but it's architected for long term. This isn't a, uh, you know, a short term solution. This is something you're going to enjoy for many years to come. Um, now, Connect is the way that we manage that. And this is something that's new in the, in the quantum environment. Stornex Connect is a new way to see your storage, manage your storage, and, um, and make sure everything's sort of uh, functional in that case. It allows us to discover what storage pools we have available to us within our Stornex family and see all of our different, um, you know, hardware, you know, hardware appliances that are in there. We can manage those and we can monitor all of those. Um, it's also a faster way to deploy. Um, and you know, some of the system planning tools that are available in it and the ability to manage and configure um, are all built into Connect. So it's really a beautiful change in the quantum environment because it's going to make it easier for us to set up and deploy a StoreNex environment for our clients. Right? It's fast easy, it's comprehensive, and it's all web-based, which is the other piece of this I like. Um, we don't need to know command line. We don't need to know, you know, Linux GUIs. We can pop into the web client. We can look at the metrics, look at the data, manage users and accounts, and, and really uh, make sure that this system is running and it's optimal. A little bit deeper about it, things that we can do, like we were just talking about, Discovering components, so for adding more storage, it's got some the ability to auto-discover those and add them into the, the pool of uh, technology that you have. Manage the clients, so the different users that are on the system, the automation engines. Uh, manage other components, so looking at third-party vendors. Remember, we talked about this, having one storage and one MAM to kind of run all of your third-party components so that you're not jumping between multiple interfaces. Um, and then, of course, monitoring the storage, the performance, and the systems. All can be done from within the Connect interface. I think it's uh, what makes it so phenomenal. It's got a very clean dashboard for viewing the metrics and the data, how much you know, capacity I've left, when it's time to start archiving, and just looking at the overall health of the storage. And of course, with the release of 5.3, we now have Excellus. And this is probably the thing I'm most excited to talk about today. Um, Excellus, which we're going to talk about next, runs on version 5.3, which is giving us all of this um, connect options and the configuration and deployment uh, tools that we now see in this. And so it also allows us to use QCloud Vault, see that as a part of, you know, so that is the cloud option to, you know, log files up and off your premise and onto the cloud. Um, and it gives us all the, uh, the LTO 7 support as well. And if you're not familiar with LTO 7 and its release, hit us up offline about that because there's some great new features with LTO 7. And really the biggest one of all is capacity and speed, having more capacity on those tapes and, and being able to get data on and off of them much, much quicker. So let's talk about Excellus. This is the cool one. This is where I'm, I'm most excited about the changes Quantum's making. Um, and so let's dive in a little bit. So Excellus is a new platform 
Uh, it's similar software, but it's got new features to it, but new hardware. This is the part that's really beautiful, um, more powerful hardware. Um, so Excellus um, has Workflow direct Director. This is the, uh, you know, these are the appliances that are equivalent to the old Stornex MDC appliances, right? So it's going to be a simple change there. We'll just start putting these in instead of the older ones. Uh, it's got Workflow Director. So this is really about controlling the file system, the management, the access of each individual user, and how the files are going to move through the system system from, you know, again, from the online all the way to the offline. Still using the same QSX for storage. You know, we're leveraging the power of that storage since it works. Um, but we've got some other new features that I'm really excited about. One of those is land sharing, SMB and NFS. If you're not familiar with those terms, no worry. But this is going to change the architecture of how we build these environments and give us more flexible connection options. Right? And we're going we're gonna to dive into that a little bit closer. Um, at a high level, let's look at it at a really big picture, right? 10 billion unmanaged assets and 1.4 billion managed files. That's a lot of files. That means we can shove a lot of data into our Stornex um, storage and manage it all under one banner, right? It comes out of the box with SAN clients. Um, you also have the option of using your XSAN clients on your apples. Uh, and, you know, and so we've got different ways, again, to connect. Um, but it's got the built-in Stornex Connect. That's the important piece. That's the one we talked about a second ago, which is our web-based GUIs for managing the storage um, at a you know, very simplistic scale, right? Not having to know command line, not having to know Linux. Um, and the ability to continually scale. I think one thing we'll see as we look at the numbers is that we can continue to add storage and, and the metadata controllers can do more now. The workflow directors can do much more than the old metadata controllers. So the scale on this is phenomenal. Um, it comes in one RU rack server. So they got smaller. They used to be two. Now they're one. Um, and they've got the ability to use 16 gig fiber for the online. Optional things that we can add to it. And this is where things get more exciting. We can add additional fiber. We can add um, one gigabit ethernet and 10 gigabit ethernet. So it's the part I was saying. These the big changes that are coming, which is no longer being restricted to only fiber optic connectivity on our quantum system, or having to have that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that server sitting in the middle that's doing the reshare. Um, so let's look at them side by side, right? Uh, so there's the old MDCs, there's the new one, the workflow directors. We've got a the older one, you know, we had a static file system counts. We can only take it so big. The new one, we can continue to scale it up. You can see here, we can get up to 32 file systems on the old one. On the new ones, we can get up to 64. So certainly can grow much, much larger. Um, the old ones, 5 billion unmanaged, 1 billion managed. The new one, 10 billion and 1.4. I mean, this is massive scale here. Um, so you can just continue to go down that list and see all the options that the new one has and how much bigger and better it can be over the previous. Um, Love this aspect of it. Most importantly, right at the bottom of the line, though, is the CPU. So this is all built on the latest Haswell processors. So it's a much, much faster, more powerful architecture overall, which is why everything you see above is possible, right? The more assets, the more um, connectivity options, all based on these new processors. And to be honest, it looks stinking cool. I mean, let's face it, left, right, left, right. I'm going with right every time. That just looks gorgeous. Hands, uh, hats off to the gentleman who, uh, you know, the boys who produced the, uh, the front grill on that. Um, all right, so different ways to build it up. We've got our basic director unit with combined data and metadata. So on the left, we've got a starting point. We have one storage pool that contains both our metadata, which tells us about, you know, what data we have on the system, and it contains our storage for the actual files themselves. So if we need a place to start, this is where we can start. And then from there, if we want to separate that and add dedicated high-speed storage to it, we can certainly do that with the chassis below. Same metadata controllers, um, you know, same metadata uh, LUNs on that side, but we can see here it's just a, you know, a quick way to grow and scale the system, but it gives us a nice starting point for clients to come into the, the quantum environment or come into the quantum architecture. Flexible configs. So we've got the new um, system for connecting called Flex Config. Um, and this is where it allows us to start to connect users in a whole new way. Um, so this is where we can start to add the 10 gigabit and the Ethernet and the other pieces to, you know, allow us to connect to this in wholly new ways that wasn't there before. Um, you know, not over fiber without adding the, the dedicated servers in between. Um, so the FlexConnect will automatically discover what cards are in the metadata controllers so that it will immediately make those available and then you can configure those cards, of course, through the Connect interface and just make this whole thing easier to use. 
Of course, we've got APIs built in here with the Flex One so that we can manage all of our storage and our RAID arrays, um, build the RAID arrays according to you know, what configuration we need. Um, and then all of it is just really about making the configuration easy and automatic, right? Um, allowing uh, the users to manage this and not have to call an engineer every single time um, you know, on that side. So excited by that part. Okay, but here, pay attention, everybody. Hold your breath for a minute. These are the big parts, right? This is the one I'm really excited about. So NAS on Excellus. So we talked about adding those other cards in those IP cards, 10 gigabit Ethernet um, and 1 gigabit Ethernet. This is what's the most biggest fundamental change that I see in the quantum architecture right now is the ability to, to have SMB and NFS sharing directly from the appliance without having that gateway appliance anymore, right? So it's already in the field today with Artico and Express. That's fine. But now it's going to be built into the Excellus platform, which is what most of our post shops are going to be using, right, our, our editors and those people. And, and the big change in this is we don't have to have fiber connecting the user anymore, right? So now we can change who's accessing the system and have more people available to use the storage, um, which is going to change the dynamic of how we move the files around, right? If I don't have to put a producer on a fiber-based machine just to preview files, well, that's huge. That's important, right? Um, then we're not moving files to a location they can see or having them b jump into the edit suite. Um, so with Excellus, we can add um, SMB. We can add, so we can add NAS-based protocols to allow our users to connect to it right over the, um, the, the main house network. All right, and so we got a really nice GUI for that within Connect, so you can see what your NAS, um, you know, system is. You can set usernames and passwords to the users that are going to be connecting into it, um, decide how it's going to be seen on the network, um, all from a very simple-to-use GUI now. Um, and this is also how we're connecting Q Cloud, right? So now we can use, um, you know, Amazon Web Services or that, you know, that Glacier interface to push files out of the premise up to a long-term cloud-based archive um, along with encryption. But it doesn't require us to put a gateway server in there that has both Ethernet and fiber in it anymore. Okay, so what does this mean for Cat DV? Probably what every, I'm hoping everybody's asking themselves. This means we can fundamentally change the architecture of how we build a Stornex and Cat DV environment. So let's talk about where it would have been, right? Edit suites are for editing. Let's get that clear, right? Everybody say it in the head. Edit suites are for editing. Why? Because we make money off of edit suites. We don't make money when a producer or a logger needs to go in an edit suite to log files or to look for a file um, because they can't connect to it because they're not on a fiber-based machine, right? So edit suites are for editing. Producers, loggers, production assistance, where do they access the media? Well, they should be accessing it at their own desk. They should be reviewing and logging footage at their desk. And if we're needing them to do that with CatDB, traditionally we would make a proxy file for them, which means there's a little downtime. Files come in, we generate a proxy, now it's available for those um, staff members to see. But if I want them to get there faster and sooner, I can put this on, a, on the NAS-based infrastructure. What else does it do? It reduces the amount of fiber we have to have. Fiber is for high-speed onlines, right, for the editors, the color correctors, the people who need to see um, the, the high-res media. Well, if I can take those producers, those loggers, those non-essential editor, you know, those non-editorial personnel, and I can move them to the existing house network, but still give them access to the media, I can reduce the total cost of ownership and the amount of cables that we have to pull through the environment. And of course, no more proxy servers, right? We don't have to have that additional um, server that's doing the reshare. We don't have to have additional proxy. A lot of times we'll see in an environment with Cat TV that yes, their primary storage is quantum, but they have an additional NAS appliance delivering files to the non, you know, those non-editorial personnel. So now we can maximize what quantum is bringing you um, to those other users. And let's take a look at what that looks like. Typical storage, right? Our high-res media is going to go on this proxy storage. Our editors and our loggers are going to connect to it over the fiber optic network. Nothing's changed, right? We're still going to do that with Excellus. But our web users, our directors, our additional personnel that are not editorial personnel, but our loggers, reviewers, approvers, they need to see the media and how are we going to have them see it. They can't connect traditionally to the primary storage, so we typically build a proxy file storage. We build an alternative location off of a NAS appliance or some other third-party appliance and, and share that data to those users over the house Ethernet network. All right, well... That requires us to use our automation engine, which we're going to do anyway. We're going to have the worker nodes in here, and it's going to pull content via um, fiber, transcode that out to a lower res proxy, and put it over to the proxy file storage, right? Not a bad workflow. It actually has a lot of value to it, right? We protect the assets. We ensure that nobody's deleting things they shouldn't be. Um, it's a good piece. But if we absolutely need to get 
on that content faster and get the producers and loggers using it, they're either going to have to go into the um, editorial station and take up a space that should be making money, or they're going to have to wait for a proxy to be generated. Not anymore. Now we can still have our fiber optic network, still have our editors and our loggers, but our producers and directors can connect directly to over the house Ethernet network into the primary storage and see the media while they're waiting for the proxies to be generated. So they can get in and make decisions faster and sooner without taking up the space of the editors who are continuing to work on the project. They can review that media, make decisions, create cut lists, and start to get the process moving that much faster. Of course, we still will probably want the web proxies because we're still going to want to ensure that our web users and our cloud-based users or non-essential personnel um, don't have access to the media um, or can't you know, move files, or we just may want to put a firewall there between those additionals. But at least now we've got the ability to make more choices on how we architect the system um, and use less servers, so less hardware, more solutions. And of course, we now can put our proxy storage on the quantum. And this, again, was something that was not possible before without doing a file reshare for our web client users or our non-fiber-based users, right? So this, to me, is really, really important because we can now share the media, have one pool of storage that's both proxy and high res, and ensure that that is redundant, dedicated, replicated, backed up, and, uh, and, but not have to have additional hardware to serve those files up or to manage those files. Wouldn't be every environment, but I really think this is a lot of environments are going to take advantage of this and be able to grow their system or at least eliminate um, you know, additional servers in their environment that they may not have needed uh, previously. So that's my, you know, what I think is most exciting about what quantum is changing in the architecture right now, and especially with the, um, with the, the NAS and the IP connection, you know, allowing additional hardware in the environment. So it could be transcoders or QC products and not have to give them fiber access, but be able to give them 10 gigabit access or one gig based on their speeds and their needs for whatever process they're running. Um, so I'm really excited about the changes that are being made on that side. And I think it's going to make a huge impact in our cat DV environment. And of course, um, once we want to move those files to LTO, we have the connection with the API to speak directly to Storage Manager and initiate the file transfers on and off of LTO up into the cloud or over to Lattice. Um, so it really you know, creates a nice combination there between the two products. So for that, I think for some of you it's coming up on lunchtime, for others of us it's coming on coffee time for afternoon brew. I hope I haven't kept anybody too long. Um, I'm excited by these solutions. If you have any questions, reach out to your local JMNA team member, your quantum team member. Let's get a conversation going. We're happy to answer any questions. Laura, I don't know if anybody's pinged any questions in. Uh, if they have, let me know. Or okay. speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. We have a couple uh, questions here. Let's see. Um, one person said, "When's lunch?" But maybe they meant, "When is launch?" I'm not um, of the is is the Excel available right now? Lunch will be delivered precisely in 45 minutes, but you're going to have to call to secure that. Um, uh, I can't help you with the, I can't help you outside of that. Um, as far as the launch goes, it's my understanding um, these things are uh, are starting to launch now. Um, I don't know when the exact delivery times are, but we're already quoting these. We're already planning these and getting them into the environment. So this is a uh, this is a now solution. This is not something coming later. This is something we're, we're ready for right now. Okay. Um, how does one monitor the LTO archiving process as it's happening? For example, uh, ArchAware, uh, some other, let's see, press store? Uh Archiware, yeah, so press so press store P5 and Archiware, so that's an archive software that would run uh, you know external to the quantum environment. And so from Cat DV's perspective, we have an API that communicates to that product, initiates the archive, and then responds, gets a response back once the archive is done. Um, from Quantum, we have a direct access to Storage Manager. So for utilizing um, Quantum Storage Manager to perform the LTO archive, its API allows us to do the same process of initiating the file archive, so sending it out to the LTO tape, and then it has a sort of an API to send updates or communicate through the process of is it done, how long did it take, what tape did it go to, all that information gets reported back into the CatDV system. So throughout the course of the archive, be it you know, a very long you know, a file, a very big file that takes a while or a short file that goes very quickly, um, you can update the asset in uh, the metadata inside of CatDV's Google 
GUI and see the um, status updates or directly through the API in CatDB, there's a button that says, um, you know, show me the statistics or, you know, or give me the, uh, the update on it and it will uh, pop up a little GUI that says, okay, here's the file, here's how long it's taking and where it's going. Um, so you'll get those metadata pieces coming back in. Okay, and is there a user-friendly GUI job monitor for the quantum LTO archiving workflow? Well, that's that's part of Connect, right? That's the piece that Connect, that new web-based GUI is delivering us, is a much easier way to manage and look at the, you know, the data, how long it is, where it's at, set up our, our policies and kind of push files off. So, yeah, that, that whole change now is now inside of Connect, where you're seeing all those metrics there in a, in a very simple-to-use web graphic. Okay, and how and where can someone learn the required worker actions to deploy CatDV with Lattice? Ah, that one, um, there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, you can um, get that directly from the JB, I'm um, sorry, no, from the um, factory, from the CatDV factory. Um, you know, look at that. You can also talk with the quantum engineering team. They co-developed that, um, that script to move the files off to the lattice piece on that end. So that would, you know, sort of a partnership on both sides. I would say reach out to either us or to quantum directly to, to understand that workflow. Okay. okay. Does Excellus work with third-party storage? Ah, that is a question that I am not um, uh, capable of answering because I, I believe uh, the answer would be, I don't know. Uh, you would have to ask okay. your quantum guys on that side. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah um, I can get back to you on that too. Yeah, I'd say we'll just send up. me an email and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll ping the right person in the right place. Um, would I like it to? Yes. Um, will it always? I don't know. That's up to the quantum folks um, okay. whether or not they and want I to support think I'm, other people's. I'm getting some messages from, from a couple of people uh, that it does, but we'll, we'll, we'll verify that. Um, I think there's but, some licensing to that of whether or not it's quantum, um, you know, uh, quantum source storage or external storage. Um, but okay. it's, yeah. And I also got a message that uh, XLS is shipping now as of December, November 26th. So oh, perfect. It is shipping. Right, right over the holiday when you can't announce it because everybody's gonna, in a turkey coma. Perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. No worries, uh, no worries. Yeah, so we you... certainly have clients that are in the process of deploying it here in the coming weeks. So yeah. Um, let's see. So ArchAware uh, is supported if it's non-storage manager environment. Uh, yeah, is, Archie, is so ArchiWare connectivity yeah. to Quanta, if we're running quantum storage, but ArchiWare is the archive, then our automation engine, um, you're kind of going back to that, uh, to this path here, um, our automation engine would be doing the same thing here. So rather than proxy file storage, that would be ArchiWare uh, archive storage, our automation would be pulling the file off the fiber-based storage and moving it over to the uh, NAS base or to the ArchiWare, um, you know, in, interface to go off to LTO. Um, now, cool part is, is with the Excellus application, we could also do that without embedding fiber. We could have that be a direct connection from the ArchiWare application uh, directly into the storage. But ideally, you still have the uh, worker node automation is still involved in the process. It's the primary data mover at that point um, to get the file and push it off to ArchiWare. Okay. And does Quantum have a job monitor? Like as you're uh, archiving uh, files Etc. I, I, it depends on how you build up your replication policies. So um, typically, files are put into a policy in which we determine how long they're going to stay on the storage and for, and you know in what status. So it might be you know keep the files as long as nobody's touched them on the storage and then move them off to arc um, to archive. Or if nobody touches them in 30 days, then move them to archive. So you can go in and within Connect and view those policies and manage the um, you know what those policies are. I have not seen the actual GUI for um, you know, the individual files and the, you know, the status of them. Typically, we would see that within CatDV, right? What files have we sent to archive? How long did it take them to get there? And, you know, or are they still in the process? Um, so we'd get little messages within CatDV saying, you know, still archiving or, you know, or in process. Um, I've not seen it from the quantum side, uh, only okay. from the CatDV side. Okay. And last question, can CatDV and quantum restore partial assets? used in an X, XML or EDL from Premiere and or Resolve? So Quantum has the ability to do partial file restore. Um, we have not enabled it within CatDV because honestly nobody has begged us for it yet um, or really pushed on it. 
It is um, in the problem with partial file restore is that um, the data that comes back from the from the file is unusable. So it needs an application to retranscode it or to put it back into a usable state. Um, and so for that, there are plug-in manufacturers, you know, there are manufacturers who do that. They've already partnered with Quantum to generate that. As far as kicking off the actual process via CAT DV, um, it, honestly, we've just never um, you know, had a client say, I have to have this, and so we haven't built it in. We're certainly willing to because the API APIs are there. Um, it's just a matter of uh, you know how important is it to have this process. Okay, perfect. And also, just want to remind people there's a handout there, so go ahead and download that if you haven't already. Uh, with the Excelis data sheet, should be accessible in the control panel over on the right side of your screen. Thanks, Nick. I think that's no worries. It. Thanks everybody for uh, joining us today. It was a pleasure chatting with you all, or or me just one this one way conversation. But uh, feel free to reach out anytime. I'd love to hear from you folks, um, and love to have offline conversations about your specific workflow needs. So call us anytime. We're always available. Thank you. All right, perfect. Thanks everyone.